In this clip, I'm going to show you a couple of gradient identities, um, and as well as having them to do computations with, it's also nice to sort of look at them just to kind of familiarize yourself with the notation and think about what they mean. Because when we start writing down all this stuff with like gradients and this and that, and there's dot products down here and whatever else, it's important to realize like, hey, what are these actual objects that we're looking at? Like in this expression right here, can you spot the scalar fields and the vector fields? Right, so if I'm applying the gradient to a thing, then this thing better be a scalar function, right? And so, okay, so probably what's meant here is that little f and little g are both scalar valued functions. The product is gonna be another scalar valued function, so everything is well defined. Over here, we've got a gradient. So now that's a, a vector field, but it's a vector field being a scalar multiplied by g, which means we're like multiplying g into every coordinate of that vector field and the symmetric, symmetric thing is happening over here. So, so let's just take a closer look. We'll actually like prove a couple of these. Um, the first one's pretty straightforward, not so exciting, but, but let's take a look at like, wh what does this mean? So here's, this is product rule for uh, a product of scalar functions, right? Okay, as opposed to, um, yeah, so let me, let's just label this. So this is the product rule for scalar fields, scalar fields, scalar function, whatever, as opposed to this one down here, which is the product um, rule for uh, a scalar and a vector field. And then you might be asking, hey, what about the product rule for the dot product of two vector fields? That one turns out to be messy. Um, in fact, I don't even remember off the top of my head what it is. I think it is something like uh, you do f dot to gradient applied to g um, plus g dot del applied to f. And then you need the curl terms, which are like, uh, a cross, oh, sorry, F cross curl G plus G cross curl F. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. We're not going to need or use that one. But anyways, they get worse. They get more complicated. Hey, guess why? Because vector fields are more complicated than scalar fields. So, okay, back back on target, let's go, let's go check this guy out. So this is going to be then, let's see, so um, when we uh, take the gradient here, that means we're gonna be looking at dd, uh, ddx of the function, which in this case is f times g, in the first coordinate, and then ddy times the function, and then so forth. You could have a, a third term if you wanted. I'm just going to keep it to two because uh, this will be or complicated enough and the computation doesn't change at all for a function with uh, another coordinate. You just have more junk with another coordinate. So let's see. So now um, I have it reduced to the situation where I can do product rule in each coordinate. So this is going to be uh, f prime g plus f g prime but instead of prime, I'm doing ddx. And then in the other one, it's gonna be um, <coughs> derivative of f times g plus f times derivative of g. And then I can um, split these guys apart. So let's see, so if I gather these parts into one vector, um, then I have fx g fy g as my components and if i gather these ones into the other vector then i have f gx f gy and then all i have to do is i can pull the g out of the first one and what's left is fx fy more commonly known as the gradient of f and i can pull the f out of the other one and what's left behind is gx gy more commonly known as the gradient of g all right um just for grins, I'm also going to do uh, the other stuff here. So let's see. So we've got um, gradient of 
fn. So this would be ddx uh, fn ddy fn. And so uh, applying that partial derivative, we have n f to the n minus 1 times the partial with respect to x by chain rule. And similarly in the second coordinate. And then if I pull out the common factor of n f to the n minus 1, then the thing that's left is the vector fx comma fy, which is the gradient of f. Um, if I do the gradient of now a scalar times the vector field capital F, what is going on here? Well, now this is um, actually, oh, sorry, and, and I wrote it wrong. Do you see why it's wrong? It's wrong because there's no stinking dot. This should be a dot product. I can't take the gradient of a vector field. I can only take the divergence of a vector field. Sorry about that. So there should be a big fat hairy dot there. Okay, so this is, means then that we've got, uh, there's del dotted with, and then g, so that looks like, uh, sorry, gf looks like uh, we multiply g into each coordinate. So it looks like this one because that's how you scalar multiply a vector field, right? You multiply that scalar uh, quantity into each uh, component. Okay, so then doing the dot product, what we have? So we have uh, ddx gp plus ddy gq. And so then the first one by uh, good old product rule, because now at this, at this point here, this, this is just a scalar function, right? Because P is a scalar function, despite it being capital, and G is also a scalar function, and the product of two scalars is a scalar. Um, so that means we have GXP plus GPX by product rule, and we also have uh, GYQ plus GQY by product rule. And so then if I gather up the parts with the gx partial, oh sorry, with the g partials rather, um, I have this guy. And if I collect the, the just regular g parts, I have this guy. And the first quantity is going to be, let's see, um, that is gx, gy, dotted with pq. And the second part is I can just pull the g out, and then I have um, what's left inside is the divergence of f, uh, px plus qy. And so then this, this first part right here, you can see that's gradient of g dotted with f. And so that gets me my identity right here.